Uh, my name is uh, Justin Kershaw. I uh, recently retired from the U.S. Navy. I was a, a cryptologist and a uh, cyber uh, officer for about 30 years. I've been working for Raytheon for, uh, for about uh, four years now, uh, doing mostly uh, international cyber solutions. Uh, so they asked me to speak today uh, to, to introduce the defense stream uh, from my background in the military, so, so here I am. Uh, I'll let you know up front that uh, my family uh, left Poland about 120 years ago. Uh, they lived in a town about, uh, about an hour west of here, so it's an honor to be back here. It's an honor to be back here uh, taking part in uh, Poland's uh, 100th uh, year of independence. Uh, last night at the great gala, the great food, and the great, uh, the great uh, people that were there, there talking, uh, the, the cryptologic efforts of the Polish uh, people over the last, uh, at the beginning of the century was very inspiring. And uh, hearing the young ladies up on stage just now uh, talking about their thoughts on cyber, uh, it's, it, gives me, um, it gives me encouragement that the next generation of cyber people, the next generation of cyber warriors are ready to go out and, uh, and, and face the tasks at hand. So, so basically the defense stream, as we're looking at it, we're going to be talking about a few different things. One is uh, strengthening the trust-based collaboration. It involves many, many things, but for us, I think we look at uh, standardized cybersecurity processes and streamlining the training and organization of the, uh, of the cyber workforce. That's number one. Number two, uh, sharing cyber offensive tools. Uh, we understand that sometime this week, uh, the Secretary of Defense, uh, Secretary Mattis, uh, may be making an announcement on the United States uh, sharing uh, offensive tools and other uh, other capabilities with uh, with NATO allies, most likely doing it on their own. Uh, the U.S. doing it on their own, but in support of NATO operations. And then the last part is building necessary competencies for effective defense. So when we look at this, both in the uh, the military and uh, big defense company like Raytheon, we're really looking at it in three parts. One is technology, one are processes, and one are people. Now, a lot of uh, folks that are, uh, that are in charge of, uh, of cyber budgets in different parts of the world, um, they believe it's just about the technology. It's just about the, uh, it's just about the firewall. Give me more firewall, and then I'm ready to go. Uh, technology is important. It's critical. Uh, there's a lot of great companies out here uh, on display uh, with various parts of the puzzle. But the technology is just one part. Uh, the other part are processes. And that's the hard work. So for, uh, for government people that have been doing cyber uh, for the last uh, 15, 20 years, we don't, we don't really have the time to sit down and write standard operating procedures for every single uh, cyber process. If we're sitting in a cyber operations center and uh, we have an attack, we have an AP, uh, APT attack, uh, there's a whole bunch of processes that go into that. And for a lot of the government folks, they want to uh, have, have those processes all laid out for them. And number three, and probably the most important, and the one that, uh, that doesn't get all the attention and all the money is the people. And the people is the most expensive part of this. And the people, the, the cyber folks that are, are making up the workforce, we don't have enough of them. Uh, and once they get really smart, they move on. And training this workforce is, uh, is key. And keeping the workforce is even more key. So for, for working on all of cybersecurity, we like to think about cybersecurity as defense in depth, where you've got a whole bunch of different securities uh, complementing each other. So if you go into most cyber operations center, you're going to see overlapping technologies. You're going to see uh, companies that are, that are uh, competitors with one another. Those, uh, those tools being used uh, in support of one another. So you have network security and data security and cloud security and physical security. And then you have, as uh, one of the, uh, the ladies pointed out in the last brief, you have all of, these, all of these different securities overlapping 
but they're, they're all built up by, by laws and then policies that flow from those laws. And then once you have those policies in place, then you can actually do procurement and do programs of record. Until you have those th three things in place, uh, in many areas of the world, the cybersecurity efforts have, uh, have, uh, have been very slow. So with uh, defense, there's something else that we're really uh, uh, interested in, and that is cyber resiliency. It used to be called cyber hardening. Some people still call it cyber hardening. Cyber resiliency goes about one step farther. And what that cyber resiliency is, is it's, it's, it's hardened systems, but when there are issues that come up, when there are cyber attacks against systems, can that system, can that weapon system, can that uh, commercial airliner continue to, uh, to do its mission? And the cyber resiliency is one of the, uh, the most challenging parts of the, uh, of the new frontier of the future. <clears throat> so, uh, I mentioned all of this defense in depth. Let me talk about a few other ones. Uh, you need to have a, a good open source monitoring. You need to have uh, cyber threat intelligence. There's hundreds of uh, cyber threat intelligence feeds that you can use. How do you bring those all together and how does your operator uh, get a clear picture of what's going on? And not only that operator, but if it's, a, if it's a, a military cyber operation center, how does the commander get that information and make decisions based off of it? How does he make specific operational decisions based off the information that his operators are giving him? Uh, the other thing that, uh, that we look at um, as part of this defense in depth is obviously a trained workforce. So cyber academies have the, uh, have the ability to keep your workforce uh, continually understanding the latest and greatest trends. And those cyber academies um, should also uh, be supported by cyber ranges. I don't know of any weapon systems in this day and age that don't go through some type of uh, cyber, uh, cyber vulnerability assessments. And you need a cyber range not only to test those weapon systems, but you need a cyber range to test your folks. Your folks can be doing a great job in the books and learning all about uh, cyber threat intrusion or data forensics or malware, but until they actually get into a cyber range and have an actual uh, have the ability to uh, uh, to defend attacks, to look at these attacks, to look at the attack, attacks in depth, then um, they're their job going out into the, into the real world is not yet done. So, what I'd like to close with is for you to think about not just what's going on in here at Krakow uh, as, a, as a center of excellence. Uh, backstage, it's not just Polish people as I just learned, but a, a lot of folks from all over, the, all over the world, mostly here in Europe, that are doing different parts of, uh, of the, uh, the academic pursuit here. But think about uh, all the folks that are coming uh, after us. They're, they're the ones that are going to be leading the way into the, uh, into the cyber, uh, cyber future. And that cyber future is uh, it's a dangerous world. This, this part of the world is a very interesting place. Uh, we've seen, we've seen in, uh, in this region alone uh, various actors that, uh, that have used various tools They've used not just cyber, but they've used cyber uh, and, and other things to, uh, to support their cyber activities, electronic warfare. Uh, we're going to be talking about that. We have another session here later today. But the hybrid warfare is something that, uh, that all of us should consider. And the, the, people, uh, the people that are coming after us, the young folks that are, uh, that are learning all these things, will, will be challenged with much greater... Uh, complexity of cyber events than just the, uh, just the basic attack. So uh, thank you very much for, uh, for having me today. I'm very honored to be here in Krakow and uh, have, have a good rest of the conference. Thank you.